What's up everybody? Welcome back to Patio. Today on the channel, we're doing something a little different. Today we're talking about the Yoder YS640S. I've had this pellet grow for 14 months. I figured it was a good time to do kind of a one-year review. I'm not going to do a traditional review. We're going to do a little differently. Today's magic number is five. I'm going to talk about five different areas and give you five tips on each area. The five areas we're going to talk about are what I like about it, uh, things that concern people about a pellet grill and yoder, five maintenance tips, five things that you should have for it, and five tips for yoder. So we're gonna cover the whole spectrum. All right, so let's talk about the five things that I like about this first. First would be just, it's built like a tank. This thing weighs 330 pounds. I think it's made out of cast. I'm not sure what it's made out of. Like I said, I'm an IT guy, uh, but it's a really thick, heavy metal. Um, you know, the lid requires a counterbalance. And, you know, why is that important? Well, it holds heat. Yes, it takes a little bit longer to get heat soaked. Um, but when you're cooking in the cooler months, it retains heat a lot better. You can still get a thermal jacket for it if you want. All the pellet grills kind of offer that. On the thinner ones, you need that in the Northeast in the winter. Um, here, I have not really had a problem. Last year was a little bit milder winter, so I'm not gonna say you don't need it, uh, but it does hold heat very, very well. And I do like that about it. The second thing that I really like about it and really was <laughs> why I went with Yoder, that's the removable diffuser plate. So this thing removes, there's a diffuser plate here. Um, think of it like a convection oven almost. We've got a firebox, we've got a big diffuser plate there. Uh, all the grease strips down to the side and the heat kind of rolls around. When you remove this guy, you can sear directly over the fire. So now all of a sudden you get yourself some grill grates and you can sear steaks just as good as any other grill out there. So that's very important to me. The other thing I like about it is just ease of use. So sometimes you come home and it's been a long day and you don't want to mess with a barbecue. Um, so what you do with this is, you know, if I'm, let's say I'm doing some boneless grilled chicken or whatever, I can come turn this on, set it at 450, go inside, prep my chicken, have a drink, wait 20, 30 minutes, throw my chicken on, go back inside, come out 10 minutes later, flip it, and then come back out again, maybe 12 or 13 minutes, depending on how thick the chicken breasts are. And I've got a little bit of grill marks on it, but I have got no burn. I don't have to sit here and worry about fire. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm gonna get a, a great tasting meal without all the hassle of having to babysit the, the meal. And sometimes you just don't wanna do that. Another thing I like about it is the fact that you can use many different pellets right you got mesquite you got apple you got cherry you got hickory you got oak uh, you can get some jack daniels ones there's i think elder there's pecan i mean there's so many different types so you can change your pellets to suit whatever you're cooking or if you just want to experiment but even more so you can blend these together lots of my videos i've done where i've blended hickory and cherry together or mesquite and cherry uh, and you just kind of blend it together and, and away you go and the fifth thing i like about this is that the range of use this goes all the way from 180 fahrenheit up to 600. you can cook a lot of different things on there you can do some smoking uh, if you want to even take it a step further you turn this guy on i don't know if you can hear it but a fan comes on right and what we've got is normally that fan rotate or circulates all the heat or, and the smoke. Uh, but when there's nothing burning and I've done, if I don't hit the start button, that fan will run. So now I can get one of those amazing smoke tubes. I've used it in a few videos, uh, but I can light that with a torch, get some smoke going, and now I can cold smoke. So versatility of, of this guy and, and most pellet grills, most of them don't have the fan that comes on like this one does though. Uh, but there's a lot of different things you can cook. You know, you want to smoke some salt, some cheese, some bacon, whatever you want to do, you can do that. Uh, and then you go all the way up to searing. So, you know, that's a great thing in my book. So let's talk about five things that concern people about Yoder and just a pellet grill in general. Um, you know, the way a pellet grill works is you've got pellets here. It goes into an auger, goes into a firebox. And as those pellets burn, they generate an ash. 
And what happens is you've got to take a shop vac and you've got to clean out your pellet grill. Um, just comes with owning one. I've done a video on how to clean it. You can take this thing apart and clean it in 10 minutes. It's very, very easy. Uh, but you know, that's always a concern for people who aren't familiar with one. And sometimes they just don't want to deal with some of the maintenance. Now for the firebox in general, you really need to clean it every cook or two, uh, because if you don't, you're going to run the risk of not getting a clean fire and maybe it not starting properly. Um, so, you know, that is one thing. Cleaning the entire thing, you don't have to take it apart to do all that. You don't have to vacuum it out every other time. I mean, for me, I might do it once a month, every six weeks, uh, but here's the difference here. Here's the firebox uh, place where all the pellets go. They come down from the auger, they come down from the auger here and they go in here and then your firebox. Because I've got the diffuser with a removable plate, I just remove that, I pick this out, I dump them into the bottom of the box. And then I, I don't worry about it. Right? All I gotta do is make sure I've got a clean firebox every time. I don't have to worry about the rest of the grill. Um, as the, you know, the grill gets full, <laughs> then I get a shot back and I take care of it and I clean it out. Uh, one of the other things that people worry about, specifically with Yoder, is rust, right? So these guys, I wish I knew what they're made of. I should probably know. Uh, I, I think it's cast, but what happens is you get some rust spots. Now this guy's covered all the time. Um, pellet grills don't like moisture, so you should always have one covered. But I've got some rust spots here. I've got some at the back. I might definitely, I know I've got some across the bottom here. You can see a little bit of a rust there, mainly from food dripping down there. Uh, and then a little bit around the chimney. I don't really have a ton yet, a couple here. Um, so you get some rust spots. But when you buy one of these grills, they ship with the Yoder paint. And I, you can watch a couple of videos on it. I haven't done it yet. Like I said, it's 14 months old. I haven't seen the need for it yet, but really it's a matter of sanding this thing down. It's matte black paint. So you can sand a section and paint a section and it's really just gonna blend in. It's really not that much of work. Uh, from my experience, I think this is probably an every two or three year thing. We'll find out after another winter of cooking in spring. Uh, but you know, I always do a very deep cleaning on my grills in the spring anyhow. So if I've got to do that, it's not really a concern for me. Like I said, I watched some videos of it before I bought it. I am not a handy guy, right? I work on computers, I get paid to move a mouse. And uh, you know, I am not one of those guys that's up hanging shelves and doing all that. I usually pay someone to do all that. Um, but I looked at this and I'm like, this is really not that big a deal. So if that's of your, on your mind, watch some videos of it and just kind of make a decision for yourself. Another thing that people worry about is just the overall cost of operations, right? Like you've got a bunch of pellets. This thing holds 20 of these pellets. Um, you buy these by a 20 pound bag. And if you look at that cost, when you're at smoking temperatures, you're going to roughly go through maybe a, a, a pound an hour. So smoking temperatures aren't too bad. You get this thing up to four or five, six hundred degrees, you're going through some pellets. And a lot of people worry about the cost associated with that. Uh, my advice to you is just find a place that ships a pallet to you or half a pallet. Um, it's significantly cheaper. I did some research and I, I used the Barbecue Delight pellets right from the get-go. I bought this from at bbq.com and they actually ship pellets. So that's where I get all my pellets from. I think, I didn't, haven't done the math recently, but it's probably 10 or $11, maybe $12 a bag if you buy a half pallet. So it's really not too bad at that point. One of the other things people worry about is just the overall flavor of the food. Like, is it really smoky? Is it, you know, does it have a strong wood flavor? And I would say no. I recently did a steak battle video where I did my uh, natural gas versus this and we had a steak and I cooked them very similar. Uh, I was actually shocked at the difference in, in the taste of meat. Uh, even my wife said this one won hands down. I just, I never do them side by side. It's just whatever I feel like cooking with. This has a great flavor to it. It's not overly smoke, smoky. Like some people complain about a pellet grill that doesn't have the intense smoke that uh, some of the other smokers out there have. Uh, and it doesn't. It does have a smoky flavor. Like you can make pulled pork, briskets, no problem. 
right? And if you know anything about competition, they don't want a really heavy smoke on it anyhow. Um, but it's got a great flavor to it. I, I would say that I've never given food to anyone here uh, that's come over or whatever that hasn't enjoyed the flavor of the food. It's, it's definitely, I, I wouldn't even worry about that. It's gonna be good. The last one is really, we already talked about, can it sear? Most people want to be able to sear, right? If they're cooking burgers, they're doing steaks, chicken, pork chops, whatever. If you have a grill, you want to be able to sear. And I think that that's a common uh, concern that people have and Yoder's got you covered. So let's talk maintenance tips real quick. I did a full cleaning video, as I mentioned earlier, uh, but in this, I just want to cover real quick. Get yourself a couple cleaners. You want Zep 505. This stuff is amazing. This will work on any grill. It's a great de degreaser. Uh, honestly, the best I've ever seen. You can get it on Amazon or Home Depot. Get yourself some Sheila Shine, especially if you have the stainless steel shelves uh, because it puts a nice protective oil on it. Get yourself some buckets. These, uh, <laughs> these are actually made by Traeger. You can get them from anyone who uh, deals in pellet grills and has Traeger. I don't think Yoder specifically makes one, uh, but in the bottom right hand side of this, there's a collection bucket and the oil kind of moves down and, and that bucket fills up. And if you have one of these, you can just throw this out. You don't have to worry about cleaning your bucket. I mentioned there's a diffuser in here. Get some aluminum foil and cover that every time. Uh, and that way what happens is, is that when you're doing you know, a barbecue sauce or a whole a fatty meat or anything like that, uh, it'll just drip on the aluminum foil. When it cools down, you can crumple that up and throw it out and it just makes cleaning so much easier. The fifth tip is not really a maintenance tip, but it's do some research on your wood pellets. Not all wood pellets are created equal. Some of them are all hickory with just oils of different flavors of, of uh, woods on there. They're not 100% of whatever that wood is. So do a little bit of research, find out ones that work good for you. Um, I learned recently actually that Yoder uses the Barbecue Delight ones in all their testing. Um, I don't know what that if that says anything for you, uh, I actually read some really good reviews on them when I first started and I, I haven't tried anything else. Uh, there are some other brands out there that are good. Uh, I just, I've been really happy with my results on these. So that's what I'm using. If you're in the market for one of these, here's five things I think that you need. Number one, I've talked about it several times throughout the video, the removable heat diffuser. The grill comes with a solid one. It will work perfectly fine that way. Um, and you know, if you put over your meat over the firebox, you're gonna be able to get a little bit of sear on that. Uh, but honestly, for being able to clean it easily and the ability to sear, the removable plate is a must have. Uh, I, I wouldn't advise anyone to, to buy one of these with edit. Get yourself some grill grates. So grill grates makes these for any barbecue. So if you don't have a pellet, you can, you can find them for any grill you want. But here's what they look like, right? They are made out of a very hard aluminum. They're raised on one side so you can get a great uh, sear marks, grill marks on your meat. You can flip them over and use the flat side as well if you want. Um, but they are great. If you look at some of the steak competitions, I can't remember what they're called, but almost everyone is using those just because you can get such great grill marks on them. Um, but they allow you to get super hot because of their, their aluminum, they really heat up well and you can get a great sear on them. So that's a must have. Another one is, you see these stainless steel shelves? These are actually wire racks underneath and the stainless steel sleeves go over top of them. Wire racks, great for a plate, not so great for a barbecue bottle, especially if it happens to be a glass one, you knock it over. Uh, it's just not stable. I think that the, the stainless steel sleeves are a must have. They have them for the side as well. You can buy them individually. So if you're fine with a wire rack over here, you can. 
if you buy the one that's on the side here, you get some hooks so that you can hang your utensils there. Um, I, I think that's just, just a great thing to have. In here I have that, the rack that comes with it. It's what they call a full rack. Um, right away, I bought the half rack. And just as it says, it's a half rack. It only goes here. So the great thing about that is, is that when you have a full bottom rack and you just need a little bit of extra room, now you can use the whole area without having any issues. Uh, when, the, when the full rack's in there, it's just a little cumbersome to work on the bottom rack for me. Uh, you know, if you're doing six briskets or whatever, it's great to have that big rack on top. Uh, but if you've got a whole bunch of chicken wings or something across the bottom and, and you just need to, uh, a little bit of extra room up top, the half rack is great, or you can just pull it out. But I think that the half rack is definitely a must have. Um, and the fifth one is a cover. Cover is very important. Um, the one thing about these pellets, they, uh, I've dropped a couple, <laughs> but they turn into sawdust in the, in the moisture. So um, you do not want to get any water near the pellet hopper at all. You want that cover at all times. So buy yourself a cover. They have one, as you can see, there's some, some handles here on this guy. So it's a little bit of an odd shape. Even the uh, chimney here, which goes down and out of the way, Yoder has a cover that properly fix whatever grill you have, whether it be the 480 or the 640. Um, little tangent here. 40 is just a little smaller. Other than that, it's almost identical, except for here we have a damper, and this damper slides over here and sits in the middle and then goes over to the right. And the, the premise there is, is that if it's in the middle, even heat. If it's on the left, it's hot heat on the, the searing side, and then hotter on the right side if you pull it all the way out. Uh, don't let that be a buying decision for you. Buy it on size. The damper, I, I, it's in the middle all the time. I, I never use it. I've used it maybe once or twice. It does make a little difference on the searing, but if you've got grill grates and you turn it up to 500, 550, it's hot. The, you don't need the damper at all. Um, so buy it on size. My opinion is you can never be too big. <laughs> so uh, I think the 640 is perfect for everyone, but that's up to, to you and your family. I mean, we have, there's two of us. This is me and my wife. I do like to entertain from time to time, but I don't ever want to be in a situation where I don't have enough cooking surface. And that brings us to uh, suggestions for Yoder, really. And of course I was able to come up with five of those. Uh, we just talked about the cover. I'm gonna talk about that one first. The cover's great, it's, it fits well. Uh, my problem with it is, is it does leak moisture a little bit. Like if it's rained hard and um, I come out in the morning to use my grill, like I've got water here and it's, it's a whole bunch of moisture. So the cover is not, um, it's not waterproof, it's water resistant. The whole thing isn't wet, it's just a couple pieces. And I don't know if that's gonna migrate over time or what, uh, but you know, obviously there's a little bit of rust that you have to deal with. So I don't, if I can keep moisture off here, I don't wanna have moisture on here, right? So I, I think that the cover can be improved. Uh, number two would be the whole heat diffuser panel. I just, I don't see a time when someone's not gonna want that. It just, there's too many reasons to have it. If it's, even if it's only for cleaning, uh, to make your life a little easier. I just think that Yoder should include that from, from the get-go. Uh, number three would be the app, right? So the app is good. They use Firewire, or fire, Fireboard, sorry. Um, and uh, it's, I think that it's Fireboard's own app that's integrated with this. It's great, don't, don't get me wrong. Um, you can adjust the temperature, you can adjust uh, your temperature probes, you can make it come up to a certain temperature, and if your meat's done, you can have it come down to 200 degrees just to keep it warm. That part's great. Uh, I just think that it can be improved upon. Like, you know, having played with, with the Traeger, you've got a whole app that has, um, you know, recipes and cook times and things like that. I just think that that's something that, that Yoder could probably, whether it be a Yoder app 
that's dedicated to recipes or if it's integrated with the fireboard. I'm not sure what the answer is to that. I just think that it's something that they could probably do. Number four would be come up with a way to remove the pellets a little easier. Um, some of, a lot of the newer models of competitors, they've got a, a door that opens up so you can scoop out pellets out the back. Some of them have got a little chute. Um, but, you know, I, I said it earlier, the great thing about having a pellet grill is you can try a whole bunch of different pellets. Uh, so what I normally do is I burn them down low and just top up as much as I need so that if I want to change the flavor next time I can. Um, you know, there's been times where it's been half full and I'm like, oh, I'm going to cook this and I really want this kind of wood and I've got something else in there and you got to scoop them into a bucket and change it. It's not a deal breaker, uh, but to add another a door at the back or something just to help scoop it out would be a lot easier, I think. The final suggestion for Yoder would really be to do with the diffuser, right? The diffuser tray, um, it is not painted or anything like that, so it does rust. Now, I have an upgraded, not an upgraded, but I have a replacement door because um, now, now they come with a shorter lip. It's a little bit difficult to uh, grab with a glove on, um, but the great thing is, is that if you're using grow grates, it doesn't hit the lip like the other one did. But, you know, the diffuser tray is rusty a little bit, and you can see that this is already developing rust. Now, this guy's never seen rain. It's always covered, like I said. Um, so it's just developing rust on its own, just from moisture in the air. It's not a big deal because food doesn't touch it or anything like that. But I think that Yoda could probably, maybe, I don't know, porcelain coat one. And the reason for that is, is that number one, it wouldn't rust. And number two, it would be a lot easier to clean. Uh, that way you wouldn't have to use aluminum foil all the time. And, you know, you'd have a, a surface that's easy to clean and doesn't rust. So that's just a thought that uh, I had about it. Um, not a deal breaker by any means, uh, but I'm giving suggestions. So there's number five. Hopefully you learned something new today. And if you're in the market, love my pellet grill. Happy I added one. I was actually not planning on adding one, like I said in the beginning. Uh, last year at this time, or well, beginning of this, the summer last year, I had a Komodo Joe Big Joe, which I had had for three and a half years. And I just got this guy. I actually have to do a one-year review on everything. Um, I upgraded to the Komodo Komodo, sold the Komodo Joe to a buddy. And, uh, you know, the pellet grill was not something I was going to get. Uh, but 14 months later, I'm really happy that I did. I do use it a lot. I use, you know, all the grills. So far, the videos have really focused on this. And really, the reasoning behind that is, um, you know, some people I've talked to about when you're trying to build a YouTube channel, don't forget to subscribe. Um, it's best to try and stick with a few things. So I'm really trying to stick with the Yoder. And I've got some followers that, that were either in the market or they're new to having a Yoder. So I'm happy to help them out. Um, as the channel grows a little bit, we're going to diversify and use the other grills a little bit more. Uh, but don't get me wrong, I'm going to use this just as much as I am now. Um, it's a great, great product. Um, that's all I got for you today. Hopefully you learned something new. If you found it useful, please give it a thumbs up. Again, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you learn about new videos that are coming up. I'm trying to do every, new videos every single Saturday, so I'll see you soon. <music>